All right, now that we've reviewed some electronic equations uh, that we'll need to know, let's take a look at electrical conductivity and ionic conductivity uh, as well. So traditionally, uh, ceramics are thought of as electronically insulating and also thermally insulating. Um, and they're often used for applications that call for that in insulation. So uh, ceramic mugs, um, insulation material, um, things like that. That's kind of the traditional um, application of ceramics. However, um, ceramics have a huge um, uh, array of electrical conductivities uh, on the order of metals. Uh, so if we kind of look at this plot here, we can see um, on this side electrical conductivity going all the way from uh, metals up at the top, semiconductors in the middle, to insulators here. So there's obviously a lot of ceramics that fit that um, description. But there's also uh, ceramics that are semiconductors, as you can see here. And there's a lot of these ceramics um, that have applications like superconductors uh, and catal uh, catalysts and electrodes that have comparable uh, conductivity as metals. And so they have a huge range of conductivities, you know, to the order of 24 orders of magnitude. So they span all of this. So ceramics are sort of um, very well positioned for a lot of different applications from, from insulators all the way up to uh, metallic conductivity. All right, so we looked at electrical conductivity in the, uh, in the, the review section, uh, but another way of thinking about it is to look, think of it as the resulting steady state current that we have, so the current that flows through a ceramic um, from the application of a constant uh, electric field. Right, so that's that's how we can kind of uh, think about conductivity. So when we look at metals, this conductivity is a result of free electrons, right? So valence electrons um, that are are uh, not tied to any particular um, atom, and semiconductors. Um, this happens from the generation of electron and electron holes. That's where we get conductivity. But in ceramics we can have electronic and ionic sort of defects uh, that also cause uh, conductivity. And so, um, so when we think about conductivity, we often have to think about electronic and ionic at the same time. So that's why this section has, has both. All right, so let's go to um, the sort of generic formula for conductivity. So again, we're using sigma to represent conductivity and the subscript I for a species I, so whatever species we're looking at. And so when we're looking at this general um, conductivity equation, so this can apply for electronic or ionic, uh, we have three main factors that we're going to look at. So uh, just a re uh, review, conductivity, again, units of semen per minute, uh, and also that can be translated into ohm. Uh, so that's just the inverse of uh, ohms. And so this conductivity is a result of three factors. So the first one being uh, charge concentration. So this is how many, um, the concentration of these carriers we have, see the mobile carriers. So this could be electrons, this could be the ionic species. And so this is going to be a concentration, so it is the number of those per volume, so it has units of uh, 1 over uh, volume, so meters uh, cubed. So that's the first factor. The second one is the charge, so the charge of the carrier. Um, and so here we've put together both E, lowercase e, so the charge of an electron, which I've given to you down here as a constant. So we all know what the charge of an electron is. Uh, this is in coulombs. And then multiplied by the unit charge, so zi, so whatever the unit charge of that species is. So if it's electron, then it's uh, one. 
Uh, if we're dealing with the ionic species, uh, it could be plus two, plus three, whatever the, the valence of that ionic species is. And so that's the charge of the carrier. So the last factor that we have is the, the mobility. So carrier, so whatever the species is, the carrier, um, we're looking at its mobility. And so this has some interesting units. So this is a uh, meter squared over uh, volt second. And so uh, another way of looking at this is to think of this as the um, average drift velocity under the applied electric field. So when we calculate conductivity and we think about what affects conductivity, we're gonna have to uh, look at the concentration, we're gonna have to look at the charge, and then we're gonna have to look at its mobility. Those are the three factors that we're gonna look at. All right, and like I said, we can have uh, electronic, so dealing with electrons, or we can have uh, ions. And so um, this is just rewriting the uh, electronic conductivity in, in a slightly different way. And then we have we can have uh, ionic conductivity, in this case, plus. And so this is just writing it in a slightly different form. So the total conductivity uh, is then, then going to be the sum of all those uh, different conductivities. So the total uh, conductivity here is the electronic plus the ionic, so in this case, the positive. And if there was any negative um, ions, we would include that um, as well. So because of that, because we have uh, a mixture of different components, uh, then we have to consider the, the fractions of those conductivities. And so those uh, fractions um, are what we call the transference or the transport number. And so, again, all this is, is uh, we refer to this as with a lowercase t, and then the transference number for electrons is just going to be the conduct, electronic conductivity divided by the total. For cations, or the plus species, it would be the plus conductivity over the total conductivity. And so this just tells us what fraction of the overall conductivity uh, is electronic, or is cations, or is uh, anions. And so if we kind of run through uh, some examples here, look at this table that I'm including from a, a different uh, resource, uh, we see that, for example, sodium chloride, we've looked at this quite a bit, um, at 400 degrees, uh, we have a transference number of one for cations. So this tells us that 100% of the conductivity is cation. So there's no uh, anion conductivity and then also no uh, electronic conductivity. It's all cations. However, if we increase the temperature and we increase it to 600 degrees Celsius, you can see that the cation uh, transference number or transport number is still very high, but it's 0.95. So 95% is cationic conductivity. But now there's a small fraction that is anion. And so this just gives us what fraction uh, occurs there. And so you can look at all these other ones as well. Some of them have uh, fractions between cation and anion. Some of them have uh, fractions uh, between cation or anion and electrons. So they can have uh, variations uh, with these different types uh, of conductivity. All right, so when uh, we're looking um, at the first part of this expression, we wanna look at the concentration of these carriers. And specifically, uh, we're gonna look at electronic carriers now. And so you know, when we looked at uh, defects in a previous chapter, we referred to uh, these as, as defects, right? So electrons uh, or electron holes uh, as defects. And so we're gonna look at three different ways in which we can generate these electronic defects. And we're gonna take this sort of one by one, but let me sort of summarize them here first. So we're gonna look at intrinsic semiconductors. So formation of electron electron hole pairs uh, when we sort of overcome the band gap. That's one way we can generate these carriers. 
Uh, another way would be extrinsic semiconductors, where we create these carriers by some sort of external factor, so doping or impurities. Uh, we can create these um, species. And then lastly, we've talked about this one as well, but non-stoichiometric uh, conductors. So these are uh, creating these defects or carriers uh, as a result uh, of uh, non-stoichiometric uh, reactions. So think back to the Brouwer diagram and how we could generate species like electrons or electron holes uh, by varying the oxygen partial pressure of oxides. So we're going to talk about these three factors uh, and how we create these different types of carriers to look at the first part uh, of that equation. And I'm going to go back to that real quick just so that you can kind of see where we're at. So again, conductivity, we're looking right now at the concentration. We're trying to identify how we can make these carriers.